Hello fellow coders and welcome to another video. Today I am going to be showing you another block detect routine. This one which I call uh, magic blocks. So when you hit the little ball here what happens is that the ledges are replaced by these empty blocks and vice versa. So it creates this kind of uh, Super Mario World effect. As you can see here you can build a level where the player has to work out exactly what to do in terms of uh, switching the blocks on and off and they're on a timer as well. So, um, as you might imagine, this uses the block detect routine that I've showcased in another video, so you should certainly go back and watch that first as uh, the assumption is that you have already seen that and you know a little bit about the principles that are involved. So, uh, considering that you've done that, let's take a quick look here and we'll look at the um, character set because I've actually uh, created a new routine now using uh, some internal AGD code and it means that the new block detect routine is uh, a very lovely 16 bytes only so it only takes up those uh, two little characters which gives us plenty more room for uh, for other additional tricks and uh, of course that's great so uh, yeah I'll, I'll uh, be showing you how to load this binary in uh, I'll make it available on a Dropbox or something like that. But uh, essentially, yeah, what you do is you go to load binary data. In this case, I've got this one here, which as I said, I'll make it downloadable. Load it in, and as you can see, only 16 bytes. Load it in at 31704 if you want it to behave in exactly the same way as the previous one. Uh, the same ASM calls will then work. Um, and uh, we've managed to save a bit of memory. So uh, yeah, basically it uh, detects any type of block. And obviously in the previous video, we showed that you can create uh, new original types of block which uh, didn't previously exist. So we've got a solid wall here. And here you can see special type, magic block. And uh, I've actually set this to type 14. Obviously blocks only go up to uh, seven, not to seven, but uh, I was using a melting block and so uh, I ended up using uh, type 14 to mean this magic block. Uh, the other platform, as you can see, just a standard platform. Did that with a poke, again, previous video, if you want to know more about that. Okay, so uh, having looked at that, now let's take a look at the code. So as you can see here, we've got the timer, parmb, that's used for the uh, timing of the blocks for the changeover as the time ticks down. And you can see there's a beep there that creates the sound. And if we just go further down, we can see here, we're just detecting various objects and uh, and putting conditions in for that. If you're familiar with working with objects, which I'm sure you are, then that should all be fairly clear. But let's take a look at this one particular thing here. What you'll see is I've got this variable here, let j equal one. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using this variable to trigger another subroutine which will be triggered uh, in the main loop. And this subroutine, as you can see, it's triggered when the object is picked up, object zero, and it's also triggered here when the timer runs out. So in other words, we're using the same routine to swap the blocks backward and forward. And now let's take a look at the actual loop itself. And uh, this is a screen parser. So what we're going to do here is uh, basically parse the uh, whole screen. Let's take a quick look at the screen and see exactly what that entails. So as you can see here, we've got a screen and uh, the dimensions of the screen are actually uh, 21, 21 blocks down. And as you can see, there are also 30 blocks across. So normally in a loop, the, the maximum you could do would be 255. So that's definitely not going to cut it here because we've got a lot more blocks than that. So what we're going to do is split the screen up into three sections like one, two, and three. And conveniently, we can divide this up by seven. So 30 by seven would be 210 blocks. And we'll do that uh, three times to cover all 630 blocks on the screen. So let's take a look at how we do that loop because uh, normally in AGD, you can't do nested loops. So we'll, uh, we'll look at how you can actually implement that in some way. The uh, top of the code there, that's just an animation timer. Don't worry about that. So first thing we do here, we're checking if J is zero. So has J been triggered? Yes, it has. So we then subtract one to J 
and we then uh, store it in a temporary variable and then we multiply by 7. So what that basically does is that the value of rand here will be either 0, 7 or 14 depending on the value of j. So uh, we're going to step through this three times and that means we're going to step through the top half of the screen, the middle and uh, the bottom. I should say the top third. Top third, middle, bottom third as you can see there and that's why we then have this uh, repeat 210 because we're going to go through 210 blocks and then we're going to check them so uh, here we're checking uh, again this is from the previous video we're checking the block type to see if it's 14 so it's basically looking for those uh, magic blocks as we as we mentioned and uh, if it then manages to detect those magic blocks then the next thing that it needs to do as you'll see here is it says put block 3 and that's our red ledge so basically if you find if further code finds um, a magic block replace it with a red ledge and then what we do is subtract one to the column because obviously um, put block pushes uh, the, the uh, position of the column forward one and um, we don't want to we don't want to do that because we're going to keep moving this column and we'll end up missing a square if we don't do that subtract so we then repeat the process and this time we're looking at the variable opt to see if it's type 1 that is a ledge and then we're looking at variable obj which stores the attribute this is all done in the ASM and um, that's 66 that means the red color bright red on the black background and if we find that we'll put block 2 which is the magic block we then subtract one to the column again we then add one to the column because uh, we're stepping through from uh, going all the way across from 0 to 29 and uh, if column is then 30 it means we're at the end of the line add one to the line reset the column and repeat and that will do uh, 210 blocks the last thing that we do because we subtracted j once we now add 2 to j so it becomes 2 and in the next round it will become 3 and so obviously that will allow it to do the top third middle third bottom third and our final check if j is greater than 3 means we have finished our routine we'll set j to 0 and this code will no longer be activated so basically this is looping three times and each time it's going through 210 blocks so effectively what we've made here is a nested loop and uh, that's that's really the only way that you could uh, that you could achieve this in AGD I think um, so yeah, um, what I'll do, in fact, to show you how we can test this, if your screen size is different, then uh, you can try this. Put block here and sub 1 to column. Obviously, it says add 1 to column, but I'm not going to delete that. I'll just put it in there and show you that um, what it's going to do now is put a block in every part of the screen. There you go. And that means that I know that every block on the screen is being checked correctly. Uh, so you can make sure that your whole screen is being uh, passed. Obviously, if you want to, if you know that your blocks are in certain places, you don't need to to uh, to run it through the entire screen, and that would obviously be a little bit quicker. But in general, the routine is fairly quick as long as it doesn't have too many uh, blocks to change. It's the actual put blocking that that slows things down. The actual check itself fairly quick. So as long as your screens aren't too complex, then uh, it should it should work fine just uh, like this so as you can see here yep and it's just gone through the screen and it's run through it looks through every part of the screen and it changes those blocks and uh, yeah there you go on the timer just by setting the variable j so hopefully that's all pretty clear but uh, there's no harm in uh, going back to the main code again and uh, just reviewing exactly what what uh, what we're doing um, so this is the main loop we don't we don't need to do this we've just covered it let's go back to uh, the uh, player control and uh, you can see one last time exactly how that uh, variable j is going to be activated so as you can see here if we go down here if object is zero that's the ball we can get the object and then we set j to be one in other words trigger the uh, screen check and at the same time set param b to be 100 and start the countdown so as soon as you've triggered that screen check it will go j1 j2 j3 check the whole screen 
and as you can see here I'm beeping each time param B uh, is uh, counted down so that creates the sound effect you can change that if you want and then finally as you'll see here it uh, sets the X and Y to the position that you want the uh, ball to restore to and uh, basically you can then restore the ball back to its position when um, when the timer runs out okay so we can basically that, that that's more or less it really but we'll just take a, a look at uh, the rest of the code there you'll see if object is one that's the um, that's the uh, star and object two there that's the uh, that's the exit so we'll take a look at the whole thing actually running um, here are the objects as you can see they're all stored at uh, 255 so I don't uh, have them on screen at, at first I actually initialize them in the um, uh, load screen when this when the screen starts screen reload it, it puts them in that helps because when the player dies uh, they are restored quickly and easily with a restart so yeah basically this is uh, how it's done you jump across of course it's a pretty easy one this really just make sure you don't jump down there and um, there you go those of you who are curious about that little uh, uh, comment there, Shine Get, that's a little Mario reference. It's actually from uh, Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, well done if you spotted that. And, yep, there you go. So, well, that's how you die. Okay, so, um, yeah, basically what, what, what this means, of course, is that rather than a lot of coding, uh, you can actually now just uh, basically change the blocks and put them exactly where you want and create new screens and you don't need to add any extra code, you don't need to do any conditions um, which obviously saves uh, a huge amount of memory it might not be absolutely as quick but it certainly saves a huge amount of memory because you don't need uh, separate code for each screen and effectively you've created blocks which will behave in exactly the same way on every screen where wherever you place them so uh, yeah as you can see here this is where I'm initializing the um, the, the uh, objects 0, 1 and 2 uh, just resetting them making sure that they are um, all gone and um, and then I'm setting the two objects that we want on screen to be uh, to be there for the player um, objects uh, once they're taken by the player are usually just kept even when you restart so that's why you have to do that okay so I've also posted this on uh, on the Facebook and I've invited people to uh, to make their own screens and I'd certainly be happy to do that certainly if we had enough of those we would uh, we'd be able to make perhaps a full game and uh, that would be quite fun for the community and uh, I'll just show you one here which uh, Douglas Bagnall sent in so thank you Doug for this and uh, he's actually done a couple of these but uh, I just thought I'd show you this one in action and in this one what happens is as you go across the ball is actually restored and we get a double swap and what you have to do is drop down much like uh, one of the screens in Manic Miner itself onto the exit in order to solve the puzzle so they're actually quite um, fun these little puzzles and if you fancy having a go at one then uh, have a look for us on the um, Facebook page and uh, you know add, uh, add some more puzzles who knows maybe we can make a whole little game together I think that would be quite fun and a uh, little community project maybe all right so that's it then i think more or less hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it useful as always keep enjoying the spectrum and agd and happy coding bye bye